Today we have a BKFC 15 doubleheader. We talked to Quentin Henry about his fight against Jason Fan and Dakota Cochran about his fight against Tyler Vogel. And that's coming up right now. Man, do me a favor. Talk about, before we get to the fight itself, I've noticed because uh, you fought uh, before at heavyweight and this fight is going to be a 205, correct? Right. Dude, I've looked at like a lot of your social media. You've you fucking slimmed down. You're looking ripped. Like, what are you? What are you doing, man? Like, what have you changed up? Uh, is this where you prefer to be, two hundred five versus heavyweight? You know, tell us about what you've been doing about that. Um, well, I um, the last fight I it was supposed to be at two hundred pounds. Okay, I was coming off of like about a six month layoff, and uh, I took the fight on like twenty one day notice, and uh, so I wasn't in very good shape for the last time, um, and uh, like. Somebody was trying to say I had a uh, like steroid injection sites on my stomach or whatever from the last picture. It's actually tumors. I had 21 of them removed from oh my, my God. body. Yeah, but uh, you know they were saying that, but that, that's regards. But I just was I thought it was funny that that's like the worst I've ever looked in my entire life, and I was accused of being on steroids. <laughs> so I told him I was like, dude, if you thought I was juicing then, just wait till you see me next time. And it was mainly just you know when quarantine hit. Um, well, the, it, a lot of it was, I've been in training camp all year. Um, as soon as I got released from surgery, I started training to get ready for a fight. Cause I had to, you know, that I had to get back to just being in normal shape to even start. And then, um, after surgery, I was supposed to fight, I think in April mm. and then that didn't happen. Right. Cause that's when COVID shut down, yep. so, but the fights were only getting pushed off like two weeks at a time, four weeks at a time. So it wasn't enough time between fights to just like chill, yeah. you know? So, um, and then also, you know, when quarantine was going on, they closed all the gyms. Um, but I, I own a gym. So, um, I was working out every day. <laughs> I had, I had time to work out, um, you know, two, three, four hours a day. I could be up here working out or doing whatever, you know, my kids weren't in daycare or school. Um, and I mean, my gym's basically just a giant playhouse, <laughs> you know, for kids, right. so, you know, we, they'd hang out up here with me all day and I'd work out with my buddy and, uh, you know, and that was kind of where it went. I was trying to get up to a higher weight because I was supposed to be fighting at heavyweight. Um, and that was just a freak thing because my opponent wasn't able to cut as much. So I said, whatever, I'll fight you, you know, at 215. What do you prefer? I walk around 220, 215. That's my that's where I feel the best as far as like waking up in the mornings when I wake up uh -huh. I, where I feel good. Um, so you know two two oh five is a is a good weight class for me. Okay. But I got like two forty five. Um and then that was where, you know, just being that heavy was starting to wear me down physically. Um, so I was like, All right, you know, let's go back to two oh five and then um I got offered a fight at one ninety five and I was like, Okay, let me see if I can make the cut. And then I got down below 210, like pretty easy. I think I hit like 207. I'm like, oh yeah, I can make, you know, 195, no big deal. And that fight got shut down. So then it was like, well, I guess 195 is in range. Let's see what's up. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, I just had time to work out during quarantine, mainly, mainly a lot of that. Um, I left the fire department since that last fight. So I've got more of a regular schedule. Uh, I think that's played a lot into it as far as being able to plan out my days and not being gone, you know, a third of the year. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of that, that's played into it. Um, and I got, I guess something happened like when I hit like 30 and I, I guess like my frontal load developed or something and it just got easier to be more disciplined about what I was doing um, as far as eating. And it could be that I just, I was forced to be in training camp <laughs> for so long that just kind of became life. And, um, you know, so yeah, I mean, I'm this isn't the last minute workout and I'm going to work out every day up until about two or three before the fight. It's just, it's what I do now. So I don't feel right if I don't. Well, just out of your curiosity, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to look Jack like you, man, what kind of diet are you on? What are you doing? Uh, I need to write a book on what I do. Um, cause it's not anything in uh, specific. Uh, but I mainly, I follow more of like, um, kind of an animal based, uh, keto type of diet. Sure. Intermittent fasting. Um, now when okay. I got, I mean, the reason I look like this now is cause I spent six months 
smashing food and eating everything, lifting weights and stuff. And now I've, I've cut back down. Uh, but the intermittent fasting is probably the, the best thing I could say to do. Um, I do, I try to eat, especially when I'm in training camp and I'm cutting the last couple pounds, I'll eat once a day at night, you know, mm -hmm. after training, uh, I drink water throughout the day. Um, I own a nutrition shop and we've got these energy teas that are zero calorie. They use stevia. So, um, you know, they don't break your fast. You can drink those throughout the day. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's mainly it. Just don't eat crap. And I work out a lot. So yeah, you know, that's a big deal is this, you know, I, I used to train when I was, you know, in my early twenties, man, I trained over, I overtrained and I yeah. could eat whatever I wanted. And I stayed, I stayed in shape. I didn't get fat or anything. And then, um, I, you know, I've been looking at pictures of me over the years. There's never really been a time in my life besides right before that last fight that I wasn't in shape, but you know, it's just funny to see how like, and me as a male, as you develop, you know, your skin gets thinner and you start to, you know, yep. get that, that old man muscle type of deal. And it's like, yep. I'm, I'm kind of making that transition there and, uh, you know, but it's been, a uh, you know, like I, I had an article the other day, you know, it was like they were talking about how, you know, fighting their training is therapy to, to me and then whatever, um, you yeah. know, 2020 started off like one of the just I couldn't have imagined it being any better as far as my businesses, my gyms and all that stuff going on. Um, and then Corona hit and all that stuff's just taken away from you and you just can't do anything about it. Um, yeah. And, you know, before all this i used to just think you know i'm good at everything you know like i got this business thing going i'm you know it seems like it's successful it was and i mean we're still going but um you know but when it boiled down to it it's like you know the only thing you're really good at is fist fighting hmm. and um and this is the only thing that doesn't give me that stress um hmm. and i try to deny it i guess for the longest time it's like i don't want to just be a fist fighter but damn it i'm good at it and and uh so I've finally just kind of accepted that. And um, so it's gotten a lot of my focus, a lot more of my attention. Um, I was one of those athletes, I guess, that growing up, I was kind of just more talented naturally than a lot of people. So I didn't work as hard. And, uh, you know, I guess due to immaturity or whatever reasons. But and I, I think that's all just kind of coming together. So um, I'm, I'm excited about it. Mm. Oh, before it gets off my brain, because you it's a lot to – that's a lot to digest and break down, but like, uh, uh, I'm going back real quick to uh, my diet. So, and I, I just wanted to get your opinion on this. Right. I might even, I, now I might even cut this out. I don't know, but like, so I do like uh, low carb stuff, high protein, like keto kind of thing too. I try to keep, you know, good fats, eat a lot of good fats. Uh, I, I eat a lot of beef, a lot of chicken. Um, I stick to like 40 carbs. I mean, I've lost like 40 or 50 pounds, but my problem is like, uh, my, my energy levels, like, if, you know, after like a week or so, my right. fucking, by the end of the week, my energy levels are like fucking down and then I have to get like a good cheat meal in and then I'll kind of, you know, kind of yeah. bring me back. That's an electrolyte dump that you have when you start, when you, when you cut your, your carbohydrates to that huh. level, uh, huh body starts i guess trying to go through ketosis and it's processed yeah. and that's another thing too you need to make sure you're not you're getting more fat than you are protein mm. so um but good fats but also but when you're trying to have a low carb diet your body process your kidneys process sodium at like so you end up you expel a lot of that which is why keto works in the sense that it helps you cut a lot of water huh. but butter all the water you're losing your water soluble vitamins so if you start feeling like mm. hell if that's what the issue is, you just go drink some pickle juice. And if it tastes like the best thing you've ever had in your life, that's what it is. And it's funny how I, I use pickle juice for mm. it, how dehydrated I am. If I have a jar in my in my refrigerator, if I take a sip of my of the pickle juice and I'm like, eh, okay. But if I take a sip and I'm like, oh, I need more, then that's my body telling me, okay, you're missing these electrolytes and type of deal. But I've, I've, I've personal trained for a lot of people and nine out of ten times that's what the issue is. Pickle juice. Yeah, pickle juice. Or electrolytes, you know, and you got to get electrolytes that aren't covered with sugar because then you're defeating the process. Right, like a Gatorade or something. It's just well, Gatorade's fun. got a lot of sugar in it. Right. So Maybe a Gatorade Zero, but, um, you know, and then also if you drink things with stevia in it, um, 
Huh. It depends on what sweeteners you're using too. Cause if you're using like aspartame or sucralose or one of those ones that aren't good ones, um, you still get an insulin spike without the sugar actually being there, which is not good, which is the reason that diet Coke is making everybody fat and die. Do you know what, uh, I I've been, uh, cause I, I mean, I drink, I drink water, but like half of it, I use, uh, like the Mio active shit, right? Like the Mio squirt shit. It's got like a little bit of caffeine in it, but right. That probably fucking has like aspartame or something in it. Yeah, you need to That's see what, what sweetener is. Stevia, xylitol, monk fruit, and erythritol are the three that are okay. And stevia is the most readily available and the cheapest. Huh? Yeah, stevia is actually uh, actually is a is a diuretic as well as our, as far as the process we we're talking about through the kidneys. It yeah. causes the kidneys to not hold as much water. Also, so if you're a little bloated, you can throw a little hmm. stevia in your diet too. Huh? Right. How about how about that? I know, crazy. How about that? Uh, talk about too. Uh, so you said you, uh, you know, you've got your, where you guys make teas and stuff. Like I've seen your posts, and I know you guys were, uh, you know, when COVID first hit, you were like donating teas to like nurses and stuff right. like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, you're, you've kind of taken the focus off of that, like you said, and do more training, or is that still like an everyday, you know, dealing with that business? Um, oh no. Yeah. I've got to go to work now. Um, oh, I was okay. This morning. Yeah. I'm <laughs> okay. Not, yeah. I'm, I'm still dealing with that constantly. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. But it's, uh, I guess the time I'm spending training is better well spent now, I guess you could say, you know, okay. I'm dedicating certain times and, and used to, it was just like, I got to work out in when I could. And a lot of times, you know, I would be, you know, even if I'm not training myself, I'm training other people cause I got to coach and run the gyms and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, just trying to shift the focus more to me instead of my businesses, not necessarily mm. like I don't care about them. Obviously they got to run, you know, but, um, you know, starting to put my training a little more as a priority, I guess, in the past year. And your opponent, Jason fan, um, you know, newcomer to, to BKFC. I don't know. Maybe talk about him for a second, man. You know, he's, I've seen some of his social media stuff and, um, I wouldn't necessarily say he's talking shit specifically on you just maybe just kind of hyping himself up a little bit but uh you know how do you feel about him how do you feel about uh how this fight's looking um <clears throat> i don't know anything about him uh i saw the picture of him on the poster uh i think I, I saw a couple clips of him fighting the other day um i know when they they offered i just said yeah and i was like and the way things have been going, you know, I don't expect whoever that I say yeah to to actually be on the contract when it signs up, you know, but uh, it came, oh, he's on the contract, cool. And to me, it wasn't even real until the contract was signed. Hmm. Um, but I just, I, I don't try to get involved in a lot of that. Uh, if he's trying to sell the fight, then good. You know, if he wants to talk smack to make himself feel better and get ready, good, because he's going to need it. Um, it ain't, it ain't a, a, you know, a little backyard you know, brother type deal. We're going in there fist fight and I hurt people when I hit them. Uh, you know, the things I hit break, it's not like it's just going to be a little bump or whatever. Um, so yeah, if, if he wasn't talking smack and he wasn't confident in himself that he needed to stay home. So, uh, you know, kudos to him. Keep it coming. How active do you want to be as far as fights? Let's just say, you know, hypothetically, you know, you get through this one unscathed. How active do you want to be as far as fights go? I mean, if I'm healthy and the fight makes sense, I'm always ready to fight. Um, you know, I'm I'm different in the sense, uh, I guess, than I used to be as a kid. Uh, and I guess than a lot of fighters, yeah, I, I will fight anybody, but I won't fight everybody if it doesn't make sense. Mm. Um, <clears throat> you know what I mean? And some fights get offered and they don't make sense. Uh, and we kind of navigate the way through that. But, I mean, I'm always training ready to fight. Uh, that's how I get paid. <laughs> You know, this whole year of not fighting has been pretty rough. So as long as I'm healthy, <clears throat> I feel like the more active I am, the better I am. So, um, you know, I'll fight. I'll fight every month if that's what if I'm if I'm healthy enough to do it. I mean, I'd like to take a week or two to, to rest after this one. Uh, but, you know, even when I'm resting, I'm not really resting because I'm coaching and still doing the same thing every day. Yeah. Uh, but um uh, yeah, to not have the anxiety of knowing I've got a fight coming would be nice for about two weeks because um, I haven't had that all year. Like, all year, it's been like, okay, i got to fight this date. I'm waiting for it. i got to fight this date. Yeah. Uh, 
but yeah, I mean, I want to stay active. I don't want to be one of those guys that fights too many times and ends up, you know, punch drunk or yeah. whatever. But, um, I want to, I want to have, I want to take the fights that make sense to get me to my goal. And, you know, that's to have a belt and that's to be the best in the world. Um, so if that means fighting, you know, this one at 205 and then the next one at 195 and then the one after that at heavyweight, it's just whatever moves me up those rankings the fastest to get what I want. And, uh, you know, talk about for a minute, if you don't mind, uh, you know, getting hooked up with, uh, you know, uh, goat management and, you know, Vince Anderson, Scott Farley and all that. Right. <clears throat> Uh, man, it's been great. I never really, uh, you know, I've had managers in the past, but, uh, you know, these guys are actually kind of making things happen. So, you know, I'm getting different podcasts and all that, you know, that's pretty good. Um, I mean, their job's been pretty tough because of what we're going through right now. Um, you yeah. know, I know we were there. Sometimes I had to tell them one time, I'm like, look, I think y'all misunderstand me when I talk, like I'm not being a dick. I'm like, I, uh, you know, but there's, it's just so many things that are frustrating really. And you're kind of venting towards them and they're venting through, but, you know, but they've worked it out pretty good, man. If you understood the chaos that they're dealing with and, uh, you know, just, or I guess everybody's dealing with, it's not just them. Um, you know, you'd have a whole different respect for what they're doing, especially, you know, dealing with like getting Mark into the country, you know, just even that yeah, was a huge deal. And they got 10 of us that they're kind of, you know, taking care of. Yeah, no, hundred percent, man. Um, where can people reach you, uh, Quentin? Like, you know, maybe fans want to reach out to you, social media stuff like that. Uh, Hero Henry on Instagram. That's kind of my biggest handle right now. I had a my Facebook was like maxed out, and then some some dude stole it. And I don't know how that happened. And um, I've had people way smarter than me try and get it back, but. Um, I've got uh, my fan page is uh, Quentin the Hero Henry, and then on Twitter I'm the Hero Henry. Um, just uh, yeah, hit me up, man. I'm on there. I've got you know my gym is Hero Fitness Academy. Um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm available. I'm taking a back seat on the on the social media till next week. I'll put a couple posts on there, but as far as that, I'm not like you know I'm having to delete it off my phone, cut the distractions out. But um, but yeah, man, that's that's me. That's where I'm at. Awesome, brother. Well, I tell you what, man. I appreciate your time so much, buddy. So it's uh, Quentin Henry versus Jason Fan BKFC 15. It's next Friday, so December 11th. It's in Biloxi. Go download the BKTV app. It's like $3.99 a month. Why not? It's it's a cup of coffee. And, uh, man, I can't wait. Good luck to you, sir. Appreciate and, it, bro. Uh, absolutely. We'll see you man, soon. Dakota, yes, what's up, my friend? It's It's been a minute. Yeah. No, it's uh, been way too long. Way too fucking long. Yeah, way too long, man. Well, tell us, man, what have you been up to? Because, uh, you know, I know you've had, like, a couple things start to get scheduled or a couple fights kind of lined up, and then whether it's COVID or people don't sign the contract or whatever, you know, whatever the reason is, like, what have you been up to this year, man? Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I've been trying to get a fight uh, for this whole year. So, obviously, just like you said, COVID or the guys don't, don't show up or not ready or what, whatever it is. I don't know what their excuse is, but, um, yeah, I just, so I've just been working and focusing on my business and, um, still work out. So just, just waiting for, for an opportunity. What's your business, man? What do you do? I have a, a deck and patio business. Uh, oh, so wow. we build decks and, and, uh, yeah, so that's kind of, that's taken off, uh, this year and like this uh is Good. Probably, this has been our biggest year so far so uh, it's probably because like i've noticed uh a lot of people man like just you know a lot of people who are now working from home that weren't before or people that you know unfortunately maybe they've lost their jobs so they're home more i've seen that most people are like getting you know just a, a weird odds and ends stuff done whether it's you know like finally getting that deck replaced or you know whatever i've i've seen like home depot and lowe's let me tell you what those two fucking stores i i they have stayed packed the entire time yeah. through all this stuff materials has been absolutely crazy to you know that's been the biggest issue with covid yeah um, yeah we're we're super busy um it's just hard to get materials because you know factories have shut down um they're drivers are not getting there what you know a lot of a lot of different uh issues i guess there has been with materials but yeah it's been a struggle 
What what uh what weight class are you fighting at now, man? Because like I've read some stuff where like you were trying to get down to the one seventy five class. Is that? Yeah, yeah. I was okay. I think uh, with Richmond, I was gonna fight seventy five. Okay. Uh, when I was supposed to fight Mike Richmond, and then uh, Vogel uh, said he, or I guess Vogel was at one eighty five. So, um, I think okay. I'm more like more of a seventy fiver. Uh, but I'll, I'll take any opportunity I can get 85. I fought Lieben at 90. So yeah, it really, really doesn't matter. Uh, so what I, is there any reason why, because, uh, is there any reason why, or maybe anything you could talk about? Um, I mean, I love the fight with you and Tyler Vogel, but I, I to be honest, I was really, I, I liked the idea of you and Richmond. I thought that would have been you know, a, a hell of a scrap as well. Like what happened with that? Or it's just, things just didn't come together or just. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, I signed the contract and then the next day he said, Hey, Mike's out. Um, Tyler Vogel's in at one eighty five, And my response was okay. <laughs> so I'm pretty yeah. easy, easy going. I just give me a freaking date, give me a target date and then I'll, I'll be there. What what do you think about this guy, man? Because uh, you know he just fought at the last card at fourteen in Miami. Um, I, I mean, he lost via decision to Jake Boswick, which was the first fight to ever go to the sixth round. You know the the whole sudden death thing. But I don't know. I I, I think it was a close enough fight. I think it's argu arguable that you know that I think it could have went either way to uh, to Tyler. I guess just depending on who you ask, where you were sitting, what exactly you were watching. Um, what do you think about this guy? Um, all I really know is he's got a big ass mouth on him. So uh, he's already started talking shit on on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. But yeah, all I know is he likes to talk shit, and we'll see if he can back it up. So uh, are we going for the? Uh, are, are we getting? Are we going to get like a like a pissed off Dakota Cochran going in there? If he keeps talking shit, yeah. That's, I've only had two people talk shit, like, up to the fight or whatever during the fight. One guy didn't uh, shake hands or, like, touch gloves, you know. And that, you know, that kind of pisses me off. And, I mean, I, those guys were knocked out. So, I, it's not smart to make him mad, and he's he's getting there. I mean, given, let's say, a scenario of, uh, you know, you get through this fight, you get through Tyler, and, you know, you come out with zero entry, you know, being as this year was so weird, how active, you know, would you like to be in the fight game? I, I know, like you said, it's got to be weird because, you know, you own your own business and all that. Like, how active do you want to be fight-wise going into next year? Yeah, I, I like to be busy. I like to have a goal date to shoot for, to train for, to work hard for. Um, so when you just train just the just the train, it's it's not as uh, exciting, you know. And you don't you don't train sure. near as hard as as you do when you have a fight scheduled. So, um, and I've always stayed pretty busy, as like five to seven fights a year. But like bare knuckle, I think three or four fights. Like I I'd be extremely happy with that. And that that'll that'll keep me busy. That'll give me some dates to shoot for and, and train for. The rumor, and I say rumor, is that uh starting in January, they're gonna they want to do a hundred and eighty five pound tournament. Is that something like for the for the title to 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 finally create a you know 185 pound title? Is that something that maybe you'd be interested in? I know you said 175 is your ideal place, but yeah, hell yeah, put me in there. Uh, that's that's something I definitely want to be in and and uh, show off my skills and like that. I'm okay with getting in there right away. Like I said, I like to stay busy. So, but 185, it's it's been getting you know. More interesting, you know, we we saw Tiago Alves, you know, make his debut, and that's that's where he's fighting at. Uh, you know, something down the road is that somebody? Obviously, you know, he, he's a huge name. Is that somebody you'd like to get in there and scrap with? Hell yeah, I I love the big name fights. You know, you know me, I, I like to be the underdog and and uh, take those big guys down. So 
I wanted to fight Melvin so bad. I want, I'll fight Tiago. I'll fight whoever they want. You know, like uh, I prefer those those big names um, just because it's it makes it more exciting for me to train for and, and get ready for. And you know, it's always nice to have another notch under the old belt. Hmm. That'd be a good fight, man. Yeah. You and you and Tiago would be good. Yeah. No, he's uh, you know I watched him and Julian fight and yep that was a banger and I I wouldn't expect anything different with ours yeah you know I I, I mean side note I thought Julian looked really good at 185 he usually fights I think at like 165 or uh, I think maybe even like 175 on one of his fights but I thought he looked really good at the bigger weight class he seemed yeah. like he had some of the power behind him that doesn't seem like it's there when he's 165 yeah, I mean that. There's a reason I fight like 75 or above is because I every time I went down or even 70 MMA, um, but anytime I went lower, I get sick and you know your weight cut just kills your performance. So like you just don't have that speed, that stamina, and like anytime, I guess the last few fights that I've lost in MMA was pretty much due to weight cut because I just my energy was sucked. I didn't didn't have any energy or did no strength for for the fight. So it's there's something to say to be nice and healthy and strong no matter what weight I'm fighting at, like I'm going to be full strength ready to roll. Are you are you still trying to do like uh, MMA on the side too? Is that still kind of on your radar? Is it just yeah, I, I like to, I would like to do MMA. Um, this it was just kind of weird because uh, I kept having this little little uh, carrot drawn up from me that I oh, was gonna have this fight, gonna have this fight. So I was like, okay, well I won't schedule an MMA fight because I got uh, a bare knuckle in you know in two months or whatever right. it is. It just kept getting pushed out and. Yeah, otherwise I would have had MMA fights this year. If I would have known I wasn't going to have a, a bare-knuckle fight until now, yeah, I definitely would have uh, would have been fighting MMA. Hmm. What are your goals with that, man? Like, what do you what do you want to what do you want to do? You know, with with I guess as far as like uh, maybe both, you know, bare-knuckle MMA. Like, where do you where do you want to be in a couple of years? Is your you know is the motivation? Uh, you know, some people just want to go after a title some people just want the big money fights some people you know the whole legacy thing or whatever i you know what, what what's your motivation man my motivation is just competition i want to keep fighting um i prefer the bigger names like i said it's just easier to get ready for and get excited for sure um but i just truly love to compete and and fight and obviously i like making money too sure i was telling uh, david i was like i don't like i just want to fight like i'm i i would like the money but i want to get in there and just fight because i'm just been been pushed off too long and you know this covid shit has been 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 bad for a lot of people's career but you know some yeah. people have gotten been able to fight a few times so like julian you know he's fought in several times it's like god damn just get me in there and uh then then I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> well, brother, I tell you what, man, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm I'm glad that you know you finally got it worked out and you're uh, you're getting back in there. And uh, that's going to be a hell of a fight, you and Tyler. Um, like I said, I I, I don't know. I, I might even argue Tyler won his fight against Jake uh, Jake Boswick at the last card. So it'll be it'll be a scrap, man. He he's a tough dude, but you know I know you hit like a fucking Mack truck. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. We'll see uh, see how his chin likes that. See if you fucking shut him up. It'll be interesting, man. Well, I tell you what, brother. I appreciate your time, man, and uh, good luck to you guys. Uh, Dakota Cochran's gonna face uh, Tyler Vogel. Uh, so next this coming Friday. So we're a week out uh, once again, uh, December 11th in Biloxi. If you're local, if not, download the BKTV app. It's 3.99. Uh, it's it's a fucking price of a Big Mac, man. So just Go get that app. Seriously, I, you can catch up on all the uh, all their previous events and catch up on all their future events as well. So, uh, go do that right now. Like right now, do it. So, like I said, brother, we appreciate you and uh, good luck. And we'll definitely catch you on the flip side. 
Thank you, man. I appreciate your time too. All right, brother. Take care, man. Have a good one.